Hello, in this lecture, we're going to work a problem using a process cost system. So remember, when we use a process cost system, that means that we are producing inventory, we're manufacturing, and when we manufacture, we either generally talk about a job cost system or a process cost system. Job cost system usually has uh, inventory that is different in nature and difference in size and whatnot, so we have to allocate information per job. Process cost means that we usually have very similar type of inventory and therefore we're going to allocate the cost in a process through the process like if we're refining oil or something like that so process cost system here we're going to calculate the equivalent units at this time so here's our data on the left hand side and we are going to use this data in order to calculate the equivalent units in an excel type worksheet and just thinking about kind of the format of the of the worksheet whether you do it by hand or whether it's in excel is half the challenge like it is for many type of accounting problems just setting up uh, the way this thing should look so we're going to start off calculating uh, the costs that we need to account for during this time period meaning where we allocated the cost obviously in the prior time period we're looking at the current uh, cost that we're going to have to allocate we're going to use equivalent units in order to do so so let's think about just dollar amounts first if we have a uh, beginning work in process we're going to start and they're going to give us these numbers. These are going to be the dollar amounts. We're not talking units here. So we're going to say the direct materials are 9900 and the conversion are 110970. And therefore, the total, if we use our trusty sum function, equals SUM brackets of the 9900 plus the 110970. Uh, we come up to the 128.7. We're going to add to that the dollar amount that was incurred during the month for direct materials and conversion. Remember that conversion means that uh, it's the stuff that changed the direct material to the end product. So that's going to be things like direct labor uh, uh, and uh, overhead, things that converted the direct material. So that's going to be the 248.4 and the 108.2970 for conversion. Once again, we can sum those up, summing these up using the sum function. One uh, two forty eight four plus the one million eighty two nine seventy gives us the one million three thirty one three seventy. We can then sum them up uh, this way as well, having a total column allocating the total cost. Whoops, need an equal sign there. Equals the sum of the nine thousand nine plus the two forty eight four tab equals the sum of the one hundred ten nine seventy plus the one million eighty two nine seventy tab equals the sum of the 128.70 and the 1,331.370 and enter and of course it should also add up this way as well 1,452.240 uh, is our total now that's pretty straightforward we know what the costs are in terms of the dollar amount what we don't know really is how to, to uh, allocate those costs between these two departments we're assuming that department a happens before department B. So we have to do something like packaging or, you know, a production before the packaging department and something like that. So we have to allocate the items to A department uh, and then it goes through A department and then we're going to take that inventory, that work in process, apply it to the second process, that process being B, similar to uh, production if we're, if we're making uh, something, we're going to do the, do the production of the item and then maybe the packaging of the item. Next, we're going to move from talking about dollar amounts at this point to talking about unit amounts. And we're going to use the two of these, of course, to calculate the cost uh, for equivalent units. So we're moving to uh, units. And note, we're going to basically have a calculation like this that we got to just kind of memorize and, th and think through whenever we do this type of problem, where we want to break this out into the format of beginning units that we have, plus those units started and completed, and then minus the ending uh, units, and I mean, plus the total ending units gives us the total units available. Now I'll explain why we need to break that out in this way as we go and that's what we will be putting in here. So we're going to say that the 3,000 beginning inventory in units is given to us here. So we have units 3,000. Those are in process. So again if, uh, if, they're, if they're in the processing part they're already in there in, in this month. They're already in the work and process in the processing. What has not happened yet is the conversion the labor and the overhead in order to process those raw materials to finished goods. So in terms of the raw material, when we think about a FIFO method, we're generally going to say that we're, we're not going to have any uh, conversion or any cost related to the material that's already in the process at the beginning. That's going to be a usual assumption under FIFO because 
uh, all the material went in there last time. The only thing that's lacking in the process is going to be the direct labor and the overhead. Therefore, the amount of cost that we're going to allocate of this additional cost is not going to be included because um, all that material cost went in there prior, before. So we're going to say, of course, then the 3,000 units times zero is going to be nothing for this month, this period, whatever this period may be. And then on the conversion side, it says that the beginning work in process from last month that's already in process has 40% complete. So how complete is it? I mean, what are we going to have to do to it this time in terms of labor and overhead? We're going to have to say 1 minus 40%, and it's going to have to be 60%. So if it was 40% complete last time, and it's a first in, first out, we're going to finish whatever's still in there this time, and therefore we're going to have to do the other 60%. So of these 3,000 total units we're accounting for, equivalent units, we're going to take times 60%, is going to be that uh, 1,000 800 equivalent units. So then we're going to have to calculate the units that are started and completed. Now the reason we want to do this is because of course if they started it and completed it, then the equivalent units are going to be 100% both for materials and conversion. That's why we want to break this out in this kind of funny calculation we haven't really worked with too much before and break out the amount that are started and completed for this equivalent unit calculation. We can do that in this case by saying, okay, here's the amount that was completed uh, the com units completed and transferred out 22,200 and we're going to assume minus the, the ones that were th those 22,200 includes the beginning inventory because we're assuming FIFO so if it, it was in there at the beginning that that's part of the units that were transferred out therefore that minus the 3,000 means that the amount that was started and completed this time is the 19,200 and if it was started and completed, then 100% of the materials went in this time. So we're going to say the 19,200 times 100% equivalent units are the same. Same with conversion. We completely con uh, finished the conversion process. So 19,200 times 100%. That's why we do the started and completed. And then we're going to have the stuff that's still in there. It's still in the processing department at the end of the time period. So we're going to say that that's going to be this uh, given to us in this 2,400 still in work in process. 2,400 and they're gonna to have to tell us well how converted are those we started them we put them into the process now and we haven't yet finished them how finished are they problems gonna to have to give us a number on that and they're gonna say okay it's 40 percent complete but that 40 percent complete is going to be allocated to the conversion part of it because remember that we don't really need to have any number to tell us how complete it was in terms of material because the usual assumption for these when we talk about first in, first out, is that all the materials went in the process. So 100% of the materials are kind of assumed for most problems that went in the process. The only thing that hasn't happened is we haven't finished converting those materials using direct labor, using the overhead to produce the finished inventory. So we're going to say that for materials, the 2004 times 100%, they are uh, total the same. As far as conversion, the conversion of those direct materials, they're only 80% complete. So for equivalent units for the, for the conversion, we've got the 2004 times the 80%, and that's going to be only uh, 1920. Uh, so if we sum these up, then we're going to say sum of, we've got the 3,000 units plus the 19 started and completed plus the ending. Those are the units that we're going to have to allocate out in terms of the cost that we had during this time period. And in terms of equivalent units for materials, we're summing up none of the beginning, because those were all in there last time, all of the ones that are started and completed, and all of the ones that, that uh, were started and not completed are going to be in there. And then in terms of the conversion equivalent units equals the sum of the uh, uh, 1,008, the, the stuff we finished in the beginning, plus, of course, all of that was started and completed, and the, and the portion of the stuff that's not yet done in the end. So note what we have here. We've got the total units in terms of total units we need to account for. When we talk about equivalent units, we're talking about equivalent in units in terms of either materials or conversion. That's why we have two of them. It's not like we have added these up and we have 44, 520 equivalent units. No, we have equivalent units related to materials of 21.6, always going to be equal to or less than the total units. And we have equivalent units in terms of conversion of 22,920, 
always of course being equal to or less than the total units that we are going to account for. Now that we have the total dollar amounts and the equivalent units, we can calculate uh, the cost per equivalent unit here. And before I do that, I just want to point out that uh, in order to do any of these problems, again, they're going to be very similar in nature, just like many accounting problems. And if you memorize just kind of this table, whether you write it by hand in, in a test format or uh, do it in Excel or something like that, you, you want to basically be able to put this table into place. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to take the uh, cost incurred this period in terms of dollar amounts divided by the equivalent units. So the cost of this period, just remember you're taking the cost that was incurred this period not the total cost because we're, we're, we're allocating the cost that were incurred during this time. So we're going to say that's going to be the materials 248.4 and for the conversion we're talking about the dollar amount cost is going to be the 1,082,970 for conversion and then we're going to divide that by equivalent units. So for materials we have the 21.6 equivalent units and for uh, the conversion we had the 22.9 so we may even want to put the dollar signs here. So if we, this is going to be dollars, this is going to be dollars. I'm going to format, right click, and go to format cells and make it uh, maybe currency and add the, add the dollar and take off the decimals. So, so this is units. These are dollars. So this is the current dollar amount divided by the units is going to give us the cost per uh, unit, the cost per equivalent unit, we should say. That's going to be the 248.4 divided by the 21,006 gives us 12. If I go to the home tab, numbers, and add decimals, uh, not that many decimals, we got to 1150. Let's do the same thing here. We're going to say we're going to take the uh, 1,082,970 divided by the 22,920. And once again, go to the home tab, numbers, add decimals, and we get the 4725. Those are uh, rounded numbers, so, uh, you know, obviously we could be different by pennies. You could have some rounding differences. Okay, so now that we have that, then, <laughs> we can go to our uh, this type of calculation out here, the total cost accounted for, and try to see, okay, how much of the cost this period are we going to allocate to the current production? And remember what we're doing, we're in production A, and how much got transferred out to the next cycle. So kind of like if we're producing something and then it goes from one department to like the packaging department. We made something and then we're going to package something or something in a process system like that. So now that we have our equivalent units, we're going to come down here. We're going to say, let's take our beginning number in terms of total cost in work and process. That's going to equal total cost uh, given here. So we've got the total cost and then we're going to be allocating the cost to uh, beginning inventory. And again, you want to learn basically this format, how to set up this format of table uh, when you when you're working these problems. Now, note that this table is going to be similar to this table. We're going to be drawing data from this table down here and putting it into here. So we're we're trying to uh, calculate out the cost per equivalent unit. And we're going to need the units, and we're going to need the cost per equivalent units. So we're talking about the cost at the beginning inventory. We've got the direct materials, and we're going to use the equivalent units. I'm going to say, where does this number come from? It's going to be up here, and, and we're talking about material. So it's this number here. Remember, equivalent units was zero. And therefore, if we pull out the rest of the calculation, zero equivalent units times whatever the cost per equivalent unit was, which is, of course, 1150, will result in zero times the 1150, or, of course, zero. When we talk about the conversion for the beginning inventory, see, we're going to go back to this table. I'm going to say this equals the equivalent unit table for the materials. And I'm sorry, for the conversion in this case, the beginning for the conversion. And that's going to be this uh, 1008. And then we're going to get the uh, cost per equivalent unit from our cost per equivalent unit table, which is, of course, this 4725 tab. And then if we multiply that out, we're going to say, okay, we have 1,008 times the 4725. That gives us the 8550. Uh, so therefore, the total cost to complete the beginning inventory in terms of both the uh, direct materials and, and conversion is going to equal the sum of the 0 and the 85,050. Uh, now we're going to do the same thing for, for the next one on this table. So we just basically did this piece of it. And I'm just, I'll make that green. We'll say we did that. And now we're going to move down and we're going to do this piece similar fashion down here and uh, do our similar calculations. 
So once again, we've got the direct materials and conversion for um, cost of units started and completed. So I'm going to say this equals, and we're going to go back up to our equivalent units table, the 19,002 tab. Oh, sorry, let me go back up here. For the direct materials, it's going to be the same, but it's going to be the materials here. That's this number here, tab. And then we're going to get the number for the materials for the uh, cost per equivalent unit, 1150 tab. Multiply that out. So this is the number of units for materials that we started and completed. And it's 11.5, 1150 per unit. Conversion, same thing. We're going to say this equals, we're going to go to our units table. So we're on this one. We're on the conversion here, 19.2. Because they all started and completed, same number because they were started and uh, completed. And then the cost per unit, the 4725, if we multiply that out, then we get the 19200 times the conversion per equivalent unit, and that gives us the 907200. Let's sum that up, summing up the, the cost of units started and completed, then being the sum of these here. So then I'm gonna I'm gonna go back up here and say, okay, we found a home for this one. And then we're going to do a similar calculation, of course, for the last one, for the ending work in process here. And before we do that, let's clean up some subtotals that we have. So we have a subtotal here that's going to say the total cost of units at the beginning inventory. So remember, we're talking about the work in process that's still in Department A and the units that were in there at the beginning allocating the cost. That cost that's already in there is the stuff that happened last time, like last month, the 12870 in terms of dollars. That was given to us way up here at the beginning. That's what's in the work in process at the beginning. Then we allocated another 8550 to those units that were in process at the beginning. Therefore, if we add these two up, we're going to say the sum of what was already in the work in process plus the stuff that we allocated, the dollar amount we allocated to those units that were in process at the beginning it means that we have 205920 there. Then we have this subtotal down here, total cost of units transferred out, meaning they're going out from the department we are looking at, Department A, going to Department B, kind of like if we were producing something and then it goes out of the production department to the packaging department. So that means that under a FIFO method, everything that was in there at the beginning, this whole 205920, we're talking dollars now, of the units that were in there at the beginning, the dollar amount applied to those units, plus everything that of course was started and completed, that's the dollar amount that we need to take out of Department A and move to Department B. So this is going to be the sum of, we're just going to add up the 205920 dollars allocated to the beginning units plus the $1,128,000 allocated to the units started and completed. This is the amount going out from the Department A we're looking at to the next department, Department B. Now we're going to figure out what is still left in Department a that has not yet gone out to department b in terms of dollar amounts we're going to use of course a similar calculation direct materials is going to be here we're going to look at the equivalent units i'm going to say this equals and scroll up to our equivalent units in terms of materials so here's the ending materials uh two four of course all of those are in there because we started it and that's the first thing we do when we start the new thing and we're going to say cost per equivalent units for materials we're going to equals that's this 1150 we calculated tab and then we're going to multiply that out. So this equals the 2004 times the $11.50 gives us the 2760. I'm sorry, 27,600. And then we're going to say this equals the conversion side of it. Same type of thing. We're going to say the equivalent units for conversion end ending inventory is going to be this 80% complete or the 1920 And the equivalent, uh, the cost per equivalent unit is this. 47.25 we calculated. Therefore, we're going to say that this equals the equivalent units 1,920 times the 47.25 gives us the 90,270. If we sum those up, equals the sum of the 27,600 plus the 90,700. That gives us the 118, uh, 118.320. Now this last number is just basically a check figure. So what we're doing is we're just going to say this equals the sum of the the total amount that's going to be transferred out plus the amount that's still in the work and process for department a that gives us the 1,045,240 why is that a check figure 
because that should match what we calculated up top in terms of total cost, the 1,042,240, the 1,042,240. So we allocated this total cost, including what was in work in process and that amount that um, was added during the process. Instead of breaking it out this way, we have now broken it out to the amount that needs to be uh, transferred from the department A to the amount that's still in there in uh, the work in process for A. So if we did that, we could take a look at our journal entry over here and see what would the journal entry look like. If we had a trial balance, it might look something like this. We just put, I just made up some numbers here. So we got the assets here. We have this amount in the work in, uh, work in process for A because that of course is the beginning plus all the uh, costs for that time period. And the idea, of course, that being that we have to take it out of Department A and put it into Department B for the amount that was completed through the production process that's now going to like that second process, possibly to a, to a packaging department or something like that. Of course, we're in balance here and we can make this journal entry. So all it's doing is going from one uh, asset account to another asset account, that asset account being, of course, inventory type of counts of work in process. So it's going to go into B, so I'm going to copy B, that's going to be the debit and paste it, one, two, three, and the amount then is going to be equal to, and if we got to go scroll back over here, I'm scrolling down to my table, and we're going to take this number here. Why that number? Because that's the amount, the cost that were transferred out, and once we take that out, we'll be left with this number, the 118,320. So we're going to take this, and that's going to be the debit and the credit, and we're going to take it out of depart work in process for A. So I'm going to right click and paste it one, two, three. Then if we were to post this to see what this does to an actual kind of trial balance here, we would say that uh, here, we're going to say this equals the uh, this debit. And now, of course, work in process goes up for B, like the packaging department, we're going to say. And then work in process for A, what's still in there, we're going to take out this amount with the credit. And that leaves us that ending balance on our worksheet, the 118,320. Of course, there's no effect on the income statement for this process because we're only uh, allocating the asset through our production process at this point. It will affect the income statement in the form of cost of goods sold when we finally sell our inventory. But of course, it's going to have to go from B to finished goods, then finished goods to cost of goods sold.